Hi. Um, unfortunately, we had to cancel the, the talk that we had uh, planned for GDC. Um, but we do have some super exciting news about PS5. Uh, and who better to bring that to you than the one and only Mark Cerny. Without further ado, over to you, Mark. Thank you, Jim. Today, I want to talk a bit about our goals for the PlayStation 5 hardware. To me, the SSD really is the key to the next generation. It's a, a game changer. And it was the number one ask from developers for PlayStation 5. What if we could have not just an SSD, but a blindingly fast SSD? Meaning, very roughly, 100 times faster. The potential is that the game boots in a second. There are no load screens. The game just fades down while loading a half dozen gigabytes and fades back up again. Same for a reload. You're immediately back in the action after you die. And fast travel becomes so fast it's blink and you miss it. The resulting bandwidth we've achieved is actually five and a half gigabytes a second. And flash is costly. And you may very well want to add storage to whatever we put in the console. Now, the kind of storage you need depends on how you're going to use it. If you have an extensive PlayStation 4 library and you'd like to take advantage of backwards compatibility to play those games on PlayStation 5, then a large external hard drive is ideal. You can leave your games on the hard drive and play them directly from there, thus saving the pricier SSD storage for your PlayStation 5 titles, or you can copy your active PlayStation 4 titles to the SSD. If your purpose in adding more storage is to play PlayStation 5 titles, though, ideally you would add to your SSD storage. We will be supporting certain M2 SSDs. These are internal drives that you can get on the open market and install in a bay in the PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 CU is 62% larger than the transistor count for a PlayStation 4 CU. Second, the PlayStation 5 GPU is backwards compatible with PlayStation 4. We recently took a look at the top 100 PlayStation 4 titles as ranked by playtime, and we're expecting almost all of them to be playable at launch on PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 has a, a new unit called the Geometry Engine, which brings handling of triangles and other primitives under full programmatic control. Using primitive shaders on PlayStation 5 will allow for a, a broad variety of techniques, including smoothly varying level of detail, addition of procedural detail to close-up objects, and improvements to particle effects and other visual special effects. Another major new feature of our custom RDNA 2-based GPU is ray tracing. With a bit more of the GPU invested in ray tracing, it should be possible to do some very nice global illumination. How far can we go? I'm starting to get quite bullish. I've already seen a PlayStation 5 title that's successfully using ray tracing-based reflections in complex animated scenes with only modest costs. We built a GPU with 36 CUs. With this new paradigm, we're, we're able to run way over that. In fact, we have to cap the GPU frequency at 2.23 gigahertz so that we can guarantee that the on-chip logic operates properly. 36 CUs at 2.23 gigahertz is 10.3 teraflops, and we expect the GPU to spend most of its time at or close to that frequency and performance. Similarly, running the CPU at 3 GHz was causing headaches with the old strategy. But now we can run it as high as 3.5 GHz. In fact, it spends most of its time at that frequency. It's important for us on the hardware team to find new ways to expand or deepen gaming, and that's what led us to a focus on 3D audio. Tempest 3D audio tech. The meaning of 3D audio and technology should be pretty obvious here. As for Tempest, I feel it really reflects our goals with audio. It suggests a certain intensity of experience and also hints at your presence within it. It's now to the point where some of the PlayStation 5 games in development are extensively using these systems. One of the game demos allows you to toggle between conventional PlayStation 4 style stereo audio and our new 3D audio. I listened with just an ordinary pair of over-the-ear headphones, and wow, I could feel a difference. 3D audio has that dimensional feel to it. Conventional stereo audio feels smashed flat by comparison. The improvement is obvious. 
Hopefully, I've been able to illustrate a bit about our design and decision-making process today and why PlayStation 5 has the feature set that it does. Now comes the fun part. We get to see how the development community takes advantage of that feature set. I'm hoping for the completely unexpected. Will it come from audio, ray tracing, the capabilities of the SSD, or something else? I guess we'll find out soon enough.